Disgust, I take your point entirely. But with whom in particular are we going to start off by being disgusted? If I go into a restaurant and somebody's having a 50 course meal for 20,000 bob, by the very nature that they're in that hotel, are there thieves and I start spitting in their soup? <laughs> not those guys. We know the thugs in this country. They're all known by name. And you know the courts have not been able to jail them. And they enjoy a lot of tremendous power. If you show them that, you know, if you show them disgust, the problem that we have is celebrate, we celebrate crooks. But if you show them contempt, that you don't, you, when you see them actually, you don't call them Moshimiwa and you start bowing down, then they'll realize actually, I may still have the money that I want, but I want to eat it in comfort. Let's philosophize for a wee bit. Yes. This whole notion of activism, there's always talk of African tradition, things that are inherently African ways to behave, all this, aren't you going against the grain? Aren't you un-African in your conduct? If being an African is speaking out against impunity, then I am. But actually that's what I'm trying to break away from. I'm trying to break away from that culture that says that you can't speak when you're young. One of the biggest struggles that you're going through as a young activist is that uh, the heroes of yesteryears didn't pass on the baton to us. They dropped it. They became far to donor funding and they forgot about the street struggle and the mass action. They went into government or it became a career. But that could be a blanket criticism of somebody that you admired uh, so many Some seconds ago that... in Wangare Madai. She was in government. <laughs> she was an assistant minister. Uh, uh, so uh, you, that... didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't um, uh, find her remarkable that much. I said that I was flattered by the comparison. The comparison. That's what I said. Right. But not and I'm saying this, right. I'm saying this, that all of them actually, from the Wangari Madai to the other people who are still alive, they dropped the baton. They didn't pass it to us. Right. So right now what you're trying to do is we're learning our own ways of doing things. And it's actually, it's, a, it's of great concern. That so that's, a, that's again, it's a, there's a blanket criticism of those who came before. It's not uh, blanket. We should have learned idea, some few you're, things you're from saying, them. You're know, saying, if only my daddy had taught me how to shoot a gun. I, I think my daddy dead. should have done that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> not shoot a gun, yes. but my daddy should have taught me to speak up. Right. And my mom should have taught me the same thing. I'm saying that there's something very bad about the African culture. Right, okay. Take and that, it. that bad thing is that we don't train our kids and where they should go. So we, we take them to school, they go get education, then we get, go and work. But for example, life, life skills, for example, the guys who have been doing the civil society for the longest time, are not willing actually to pass it to the younger generation say, you know what, you guys are still young, you're fiery, run with this. They're not willing to do that. So right now we're still struggling in our own space. And that's why you have all those tags coming to us. You are that and you're that and you're this. But if there's a possibility, there's a mentorship, that you mentor guys from every region that you can stand up for simple things, environment, but, but how, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This, this is very fanciful to me at this stage. Yes. I'm at school, I'm in high school, the headmaster says, you know, um, uh, you must all be in bed by seven o'clock. This, uh, this uh, great rebellion is going to start to encourage my kids and say, no, we want to stay up until, you know, Within watching. your rights, within your rights, not we, watching TV, within your rights. The things that are supposed, the things that you're supposed to, for example, overloaded matatus, they, they crash every single day. People don't talk about it. The matatu is over speeding, it's on the curb. Every single day, if you go outside here, it's happening. But no, people don't speak up, people are just silent. That passivity, that silence is taught. We were taught by that African culture to be silent, not to speak up. Right, and do you think th things ought to change immediately? Uh, it will take time, but it can only take time if we discover our voice. Right, so please tell me, let us switch to the, the A word, activism. Can you tell us about some of the initiatives that you have put in place uh, for which you need support? So uh, we did the traveling exhibition which is already passed. Going forward, we run a space called Power 254 uh, where we train photographers, activists, graffiti artists on how to use art for, as a tool for social change. And next week, which is the 14th, on a Tuesday, we're going to go and occupy parliament. And on Tuesday the 14th, next yes, week? Yes. Who's we? There were 20 of you <laughs> and only you stood up. So uh, on the 14th, we're going to see you being beaten up again. And I'm your wife you're... will say, don't do it. And you will continue until you have so many scars, we won't recognize you. This is being a bit foolhardy. I'm not being flippant. I'm not being, I'm saying, if you don't have the, the will uh, to start off with, surely you're fighting a losing battle. I think... And you're taking unnecessary risks. And perhaps you're being foolish. <laughs> 
I don't think it's unnecessary. I, I hope you'll join me. Uh, your viewers are going to join me as well. So uh, how might we occupy parliament? Uh, we are mobilizing many more Kenyans. We want to go to parliament and send a strong statement that we, we don't support their demand for increased pay, the demand for don't be given a grant to buy a five million car. But uh, let me take you back. Let me yes. take you. Talk about, you talked about doing things within your rights. Yes. Now, for, the, for as long as I've lived in this country, there's been, there's been a great difficulty just walking into the houses of parliament at the best of times. You needed passes, there were people at the thing. So the idea that we're going to go one above this and simply occupy it and sort of walk past the security guards with tear gas and batons, is that what you're urging people to do? I think the days of tear gas and batons are over, unless Uhuru and Ruto want to prove me wrong. We have a new constitution, gives me the right to assemble, the right to pick it, the right to, do, to demonstrate when I want to. Right. If it's peaceful, that's right. the key word. Right. So I hope that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and the Vice At President... At the Labour rally, you had a not, peaceful demonstration and you yes. have your own experience to count for it. I'm trying to say that you... Is it, is it responsible to urge people to take unnecessary risks without knowing the outcome? Uh, it's not unnecessary. Let me tell you, they're stealing we, our money. In, in they're European, taking our money in, away. In European society, we, I, we, I've read stories about somebody who'd been a, some old man with a heart condition who was beaten by a cop and then died thereafter. Or is that good? Are you encouraging people to behave in that manner? No. You see, we are coming, we are going on a very peaceful protest. So unless the police want to come and kill us or tear us and beat us up, then there's, that's not going to happen. Right. So the a, plan is, let's go back. The plan A is yeah. occupy parliament. I'm still, sorry, maybe I, I don't know enough. I should yes. know more. How, define occupation. How are you going to occupy parliament? So we want to occupy the space until they give in. Right. Yeah. So it's like, Go there, live there, until they say, we don't want a million shillings in salary. If that's what it takes. Right. And the, again, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm not being, uh, excuse me if I may sound facetious. You're saying that people who want more money, who want the Salaries and Remunerations Commission disbanded, yes. who want, uh, I think, Gado uh, drew Sarah Sarem at the guillotine yes. uh, in, in the recent past, People who are that committed to the idea of amending the constitution are going to listen to a few people in Nairobi sitting outside parliament for a day or two? I think if we get thousands, and that's why I'm hoping that guys will be courageous enough to show up. But they, what, if we get thousands, they listen to us. So they, 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 they're not going to work. When, when, when you want me to join you, uh, you want me to tell my employers, sorry matey, I'm not coming to work. I'm now going to camp outside. Because a realistic, <laughs> I'm a re realism. Uh, it's very realistic, man. The guys who for the British are very few. The people who overthrew Moi's government, actually, who helped repeal Section Two A, were very few committed individuals. The people who gave us the Second Liberation were actually very few committed people. All you need to do is get commitment. Uh, if you remember, about 23 years ago, the women who camped at Uhuru Park to right. pressure in that Moi should release political prisoners. And well, strip naked. They strip naked because yeah. there are very few committed mothers of political prisoners. All we need is courage and commitment. If we commit, they're not going to beat us up. They're not going to do that. It will be against the law for them to do that. And I think Kohuru Kenyatta doesn't want that to happen to his new government. Already has been accused of crimes against humanity. I don't think he wants to be accused of police brutality. I don't think he wants to do that. He's a new president. He's been in office for less than a month. So, who claims to be dot Good timing, you're saying good timing. It's perfect timing, actually. The president is playing politics. The president, I hear from sources that he doesn't want to support the salary increment and the perks. But there is, the reason why he can't say that publicly is because he wants his cabinet nominees to be approved by parliament. So, the president is playing politics with our lives, and I think it's time he spoke up. And he told us where he is. After all, we elected him, even if I didn't vote for him. He was elected by six million Kenyans. And it should be accountable to those 6 million Kenyans who are saying we can't afford to pay MPs more. So it's time Uhuru and Ruto, who are best buddies, spoke up and said, you know what, this is where we stand. Because right now we don't even know where they stand. Right. Yeah. So, and in the meantime, one of the things, one of the classic ploys is that if you say that, then the instruments of state are going to make sure that Boniface Mwangi just won't be there on the 14th because he said he's going to be there. 
Uh, well, who are your lieutenants? Because I'm going back to the throne. I've been listening carefully we, we, to everything you say. We need more are, people. Who are, who are, who we need are, more who, people. Right. We so, need people because okay, please end with a message. Um, a minute I'm hearing. Uh, uh, so 14th May, I think we need to start to be counted. We need to all stand up. Uh, we have been passive for so long. It's time we discovered our voice and said, this is what we want for this country. Uh, we are going to do this for our kids and the future generation. We can't let other people dictate what they're going to earn. I don't think your house girl or the watchman or even yourself dictate how much you're paid. And I think we should do that. Uh, so don't be afraid of being tagged or labeled. Discover your voice and stand up. And I think one of the things that we all need to overcome is self-doubt. Uh, we doubt ourselves so much. Are we good enough? Can you be able to do it? So 14th May, let's all come together and let's prove John Sibiokumo wrong. Boniface Mwangi, photo activist. Thank you so very much for a very stimulating conversation. Thank you, John.